All right, let's go to the Word of God. We're, we're preaching through this series called Hello Fear. And um, the supporting scripture for the whole series is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. In the New Living Translation, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. In the King James Version, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but, the spirit, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That is our overarching theme um, as we talk about hello fear. You've seen the video that promotes the behavioral objective of the sermon that I believe fear is calling us, and we're going to have to have courage enough to answer that call. Today at 10 o'clock, we're looking at um, particularly Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Now, I know you've heard the 23rd Psalm preached a million times in church. We're not going through the traditional lens of the 23rd Psalm. In fact, this morning we preached from it and we dealt with the fact that David wasn't thinking that he was writing scripture for us in 2021 to be preaching from. David was really talking to himself. And he was having a talk with his, his own flesh to help him deal with bears and lions and his destiny of becoming a king so when we look at verse 1 it says the Lord is my shepherd I have all I need this is the New Living Translation he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams verse 3 says he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name please go back and watch the 8 o'clock word there was a word there Verse 4 says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. This is going to be good. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Verse 5 says, you prepare a feast. We dealt with that at 8 o'clock. Not just a table like the King James says, but he prepares a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. And finally, verse 6 sums it up. It says, my cup overflows with blessings. My assignment, beloved, at 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock this morning, we preach from the subject, I'm talking to myself. I'm getting ready to give you something to put in the chat. At 10 o'clock, my assignment under the over arching series subject of hello fear at 10 o'clock today my subject assignment is face it would you just put that in the chat and remind everybody that's watching online sometimes you just got to face it sometimes you're not going to pray your way out of it sometimes god is not going to remove it what he's going to do is give you the courage and the commitment to just face it. Father, I pray for anointing that will enable me to make the word speak clearly. I claim having authority this day. I believe that you take lips of clay, you anoint them freshly, that they will be the oracle on high. We pray for revelation knowledge to flow freely and unchecked by any satanic interference. We declare that our heart is receptive, our ears are ready, our spirit is made properly molded to hear the word of God and we declare right now we will never be the same after hearing the word of God this day we claim that authority in the name that is above all names in the name of Jesus amen face it face it why don't you put in all caps in the chat face it shout it out in your caps face it face it face it face it it's amazing to me because um this week we had the privilege awesome time spending time with the family with children grandchildren um, in-laws it was just a great moment and um, what's interesting is that during this moment on elders birthday we had the honor of going out as a family we had chartered a boat so we go out and we are on the boat together as a family and um, Anybody that knows my lovely wife, Elder, knows she will get in the water, but she typically doesn't do the beach, you know, the, the ocean. And so um, she will get in the pool, but even in the pool, she's going to stay predominantly um, in the shallow end. She'll, she'll, she'll venture every now and then into the deep end. But how many of you know that being in the pool and being in the ocean are two totally different things because at least in the pool you're a few feet away from the rail where you can grab the edge of the pool but in the ocean you know ain't no grabbing the rail and so as they they drop the anchor on the boat 
captain of the boat said, we're going to stay here for so many minutes and give you the privilege of snorkeling anybody that wants to get in the water. And I started watching Elder. She's over there putting on the, the fins on her feet and, um, you know, putting the, the mask on, getting her snorkel right. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, she's just doing that for show so we can take some pictures, you know, and she'll have her stuff on because I know she doesn't play with the water. And I know she doesn't feel as comfortable in the water, especially when it's 25 feet deep in the middle of an ocean. So, you know, I'm sitting there. So I go ahead and jump in the water, you know, and um, now I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I'm a halfway decent swimmer, but I'm not going way out there. I'm going to still stay close to the boat because um, I feel like that way if something caps off, there's enough people on the boat that can save me. Talk to me, somebody, throw something in the chat, like show you right, shoot your boy some hearts. And so I'm watching Elder. I've already gotten in the water and I'm just out there kind of floating in the water. You know, I got my life preserver on and I'm just floating in the water. And I see her get in the line of the people that are coming to the edge of the boat and going down the steps into the ocean. And I'm thinking to myself, what is she doing? Because, you know, she doesn't play the water thing. You know, she doesn't like, in fact, years ago in our backyard, um, Elder was in the deep end of the pool, starts having some complications, and I didn't notice it. And, um, you know, it was not a, a real comfortable moment for her. But what really trips me out is I see her get to the ladder and start to ease down the ladder into the ocean. And I'm thinking to myself, this woman does not even really like to go in the deep end of the pool. I cannot believe that she's going into the Atlantic Ocean. We are in the middle of the ocean on the back of a boat and she goes down. So I'm, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, she's just going to stick her feet in the water, sit there on the ladder and just splash. But then lo and behold, she goes step by step further into the water until she is actually off of the boat in the water. Now it's messing me up because she doesn't declare herself as a great swimmer. She's not a great lover of the water and very rarely in our 31 years of marriage have I ever seen her in the deep end of a swimming pool and let, yet she's in the ocean. And then it dawned on me that what God was doing is teaching me a lesson on fear. Anybody that knows Elder knows that she typically is not afraid to face it. I hate to bust your bubble today, but can I suggest to you that God has a great destiny for you? There's something he's calling you to, something that he wants to manifest in your life, but the problem is, it's not on the boat. And so what I saw was her get off of the boat and have enough confidence in the person that was the supervisor of the snorkeling event. Now this is where it gets crazy. So I'm floating. I don't have a mask on. I don't have a snorkel in my mouth. I just want to kind of just hang out in the water. But instead, I see him leading Elder, leading my grandson, leading my son to a deeper part of the water where they're able to experience what you cannot experience right around the boat. Somebody ought to be shooting some amens or some hearts in that chat right now. And what I've learned is that every now and then, here it is, I didn't have any other way to go today. I hate to bust your bubble, but you're not going to pray your way out of this. You're not going to be able to shout your way out of this. You're not going to be able to get two prayer partners and everything is going to just majest magically go away. I want to suggest to you that every now and then, if you want to see what God, God, slow me down because I feel something pushing me. Every now and then, if you want to see what God is trying to do, if you want to believe for the impossible, and if you want to expect all that God has ordained for you, sometimes you're going to have to just make up in your mind, I'm going to face it. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but perhaps there's something God is already doing in your life, or perhaps there's something you've already asked God to do in your life, and the challenge is you didn't know that in order for you to see all the promises of God, according to Scripture, the Scriptures say that all all of the promises of God are manifested by faith. So there's going to always be something that God is going to require of us. Oh God, I'm preaching better than y'all shooting hearts. There is always something that God is going to require of us in order for us to manifest the future that God has ordained. Just because it is the will of God, oh God, does not mean it automatically comes to pass. I can prove it to you via Ivy Hilliard's theology and teaching. The Bible declares that it is God's will 
that none should perish and that everyone goes to heaven. Well, if everyone is going to heaven, there would be no need for hell. We know that there are some people that are not going to go to heaven because there is a hell. Hell is a real place for real people. So if it is God's will that none should go to hell, why would there be a need for hell? Because God's will is not automatic. So please understand all of the dreams, all of the promises, all of the potential, all of the things that God has manifested or desires to manifest in your life. There are some things that you're going to have to step up to the bat and you're going to have to face in order for God to bring all your dreams to fruition. I please help me to un help you to understand everything that God has promised you is not going to just automatically manifest. Everything that you've dreamed is not going to automatically manifest and the enemy knows that. So what the enemy will do is deal with the emotion of fear to keep us paralyzed so that we never pursue things because we get so afraid and therefore since we never pursue things we never experience the fullness of what God has desired for us. It was so amazing because when Elder got back on the boat it was proud. I was proud to see her explain and share with everyone that had stayed on the boat. I saw an eel. An eel came right beside me. I saw this kind of fish. In fact this is what was so crazy. She said when they got out there far enough that the lifeguard pulled out a little bag and threw crumbs in the ocean that attracted the fish to come where they were. Who am I talking to today around the world? Maybe it's you, Sister Annie, all the way in Oklahoma. And what God has for you is so much more than what you are experiencing right now. But in order for you to get everything and to enjoy everything that God has ordained, sometimes you're just going to have to face some difficulties and confront it without being afraid. I want to suggest to you that that's what the 23rd Psalm is all about. I want to suggest you see we listen to the 23rd Psalm and it's good for vacation Bible school when we little children and we got to stand up and quote something the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. I want to suggest to you that this is a Psalm that David is acknowledging now as he's preparing to face. I don't know who he's facing. Perhaps he's getting ready to face the bear and the lion. Perhaps he's getting ready to face Goliath. Perhaps he's getting ready to face Saul. I don't know what's confronting David but the theologians declare this is David getting his mind ready to be able to face the difficulty of his destiny and the difficulty of the assignment on his life. And I want to declare over you and I, unless we understand fully what David is trying to express and we make up in our mind, can I get you to stand up in your living room? Can I get you to stand up in your bedroom? Can I get you to pull the car over right now? And all you got to do is say, I'm going to face it. Can I get you right now? If you're at work, why don't you shut your computer down for a moment, go on in the ladies' room, go on in the men's room and just get installed number two to close it, lock it, and just say, I'm going to face it. Why don't you just get up right now, turn off everything in the house except this stream. Get up in the living room and stand right there next to the coffee table and just declare, I'm going to face it. You are going after things. God is calling you to pursue things. There are things that God has ordained for you that I've come to declare. You're going to have to make up in your mind to ask God. Here it is. Here it is. Stop asking God to move what you've got to confront and ask God to give you the confidence to confront what he's not going to move. I just said something. Stop asking God to get rid of the things that are intimidating you and asking God to give you so much confidence in who he is that you will face that which looks overbearing and insurmountable. I've learned several things. Number one, if we're going to face it, y'all ready? Let's walk down this street. If we're going to face it, if we're going to face it, if we're going to face it, the first thing you got to learn how to do is edify the presence. Okay, see if I can show it to you. I had never really watched it this way or seen it this way. Psalm 23 verse 4, it says, Even when I walk through the valley of the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Okay, you just missed the turn. I'm going to stay there and work with you. It says in the King James Version, Yea, through I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I love the way it says it in the New Living Translation. It says, For you are close beside me. Watch this. Everybody in the room, we don't have many, but I'm going to give you a nugget right now. Now, I, Minister Earl, this is crazy because I got a whole new value that I put on praise now because praise is the only thing that prevents God from ever leaving my side. The Bible makes it clear that he inhabits the praises of God. Okay, watch this. So when I praise him, it's impossible for God to leave because he inhabits. Inhabits means he sits down. So whenever I start to praise God, whenever I start to acknowledge that he's king of kings, 
kings and he's Lord of lords. Whenever I call his name, whenever I start to tell him, come on, talk to me, somebody. You know, you ain't never seen somebody walk out on you while you're paying them compliments. There's nobody that's going to walk out while you're telling them they're the best that you've ever seen. There's nobody that's going to walk out while you're telling them there's nobody like them. So what I've learned is when I start to praise God, I edify his presence. The reason why I want to praise him is because I want him to stay where I am, okay? The reason why I want him to stay where I am is because there are some things that are confronting me that I don't want to have to deal with on my own. Okay, y'all just missed the whole sequence. The reason why I praise him, Chris, is because that requires God to stay with me. That prompts him to stay with me. He is not going to leave me even though I messed up when I'm praising him. Okay, you just missed the turn. Even though last night I did something that didn't please him. When I start to call his name and say, God, I exalt you. Lord, I lift you up. I want to magnify your name. Although yesterday I didn't please him. When I start to praise him, instead of him leaving me, he stands right there beside me. And the reason why I want him right there beside me is because there are some things that are going to come against me that I cannot handle on my own. But as long as he's with me, I don't have any fear. Okay, you just missed the whole behavioral objective. How am I going to deal with fear? I'm going to praise God. You ought to get up in your living room right now. You worried about what they're going to do with you on your job next week? If you praise God right now, that will manifest God's presence being right there with you. And then when you go to work, I'm not worried about what they're going to do on the job because yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. My praise guarantees his presence. My praise guarantees his presence. My praise guarantees his presence. That's why I love James chapter 4 verse 8. It says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Can I tell you around the world right now that regardless of who you are, when you begin to open up your mouth and get over your shyness and begin to say there's no God like Jehovah, God shows up. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in this building or in your living room. When you start to say, God, you're the king of kings. That's why I love what the old preacher used to do. Now I understand the way they would finish their sermon. They start to give all the attributes of who God is. They start saying, he's the lily in my valley. He's my bright and my morning star. He's a lawyer in my courtroom. He's a doctor when I'm in the sick room. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He's my bridge over troubled water. They won't try to just use flattering language. They had learned a principle that when I praise God, I get his presence. When I praise God, I get his presence. And if I praise him and get his presence, that means then that when you come against me, I just want you to know that God is standing right there. In spite of who I am, in spite of what I've done, in spite of how I didn't get it right all the time, my praise overrides all that. Although I went left when he told me to go right, I still say, Lord, I love you. And he just shows up. I need you to understand that even when I don't get it right all the time, even when I don't cross every T and dot every I, when I begin to say, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Praise causes me to edify his presence. So the way I'm going to deal with fear is through my praise, because praise, number one, edifies the presence. But watch this. If I'm going to deal with it and face it, not only do I have to edify the presence, I've got to expect the protection. Okay. Let me see if I can show it to you another way. Let's go back to verse 4. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. I will not have fear. Not because I'm in denial. I will not have fear for you are close beside me. Here it is. Your rod and your staff protect me. You ought to tweet an enemy right now and tell him, you can't do me in. Because you can beat me, but you can't beat my God. I don't know who needs to hear this around the world right now, but the reason why I'm not afraid is not because I think I'm all that. I'm talking to you, Sister Virginia, all the way in Ohio. I know the enemy can beat me, but he can't beat my big brother. Okay, I'm going to go down this street. People ask me all the time why I love my brother so much. You don't know how many times I was in over my head getting ready to get whipped, but my brother showed up. In fact, I got more bold when my brother came home from the army. When my brother was home, I felt more confident. 
I was not a fighter, but my brother was. Okay, you just missed a turn. Somebody ought to be getting up right now in their living room and about to lose their mind. Shoot some hearts. Put some prayer claps on that. Girlfriend, why are you worried about a co-worker? You think your co-worker is bigger than Jehovah? Girl, right now, why are you tripping about some bills that are due? You think those bills are bigger than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Listen to what the psalmist says. He says, even when I'm walking through the valley and the shadow of death, I don't start to panic. Not that I don't think that there are some things in the valley that can do me in, but the reason why I don't panic is because his rod and his staff is there. I got word for you. This is so interesting to me because the rod and the staff comfort me. Here it is. Here it is. Y'all ready? The rod is for my enemies. If you ever look at the staff, the rod is the part that the shepherd would use to destroy all the wolves and the lions that would come down and be able to deal with the sheep. As long as I know I'm one of his sheep, I ain't worried about something overcoming me. You might be able to beat me, but you can't beat I am that I am. You might be able to destroy me, but you can't destroy Jehovah Jireh. I'm going to preach myself happy in here. You can talk about me to the point that I get depressed, but you can't overwhelm me until the point that you can depress El Elyon because the reality is my God says I'm going to be with you regardless of where you go. That's what I love about my God. He tells me you can't go anywhere and I'm not there. He said if you make your bed even in hell I'm going to be right there with you. If you make your bed on the mountain I'll be right there with you. Am I the only person around here that feels like running? Because you know you've gotten yourself in some stuff that should have destroyed you and the only reason it didn't destroy you is because his rod and his staff comfort you. The reality is I've learned it's not that I'm in denial. It's not that I'm emotionally insensitive. When I get afraid the thing that causes me to face it is not because I think I'm so gifted. Not because I think I'm so anointed but I know his rod and his staff with me. You can come after me but I'm about to witness a good beat down because my God is going to take care of his children because he says when you've done it until the least of them you've done it unto me. Isaiah 54 17 simply confirms it for it says in that coming day no weapon turned against you will succeed. It doesn't mean that the weapon won't be turned but I ain't got to run because greater is he that is in me than he is in the world and he even says you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. Who am I preaching to around the world right now? I want to declare over you and I you're getting ready to silence all those voices. You're getting ready to make fools out of everybody that bet against you. I love how he finishes it. We never preach the back part. It says these are the benefits that are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. You better leave me alone. I hate for my God to set stuff straight. The reason I'm going to face it is because I know I have the right to expect protection. I know I got to edify the presence, but watch this. I got to thirdly face it because I've got to endure the process. Woo, God, help me to preach this. Some stuff that's in front of you, y'all ready? Is not from Satan. It's from God. Stop blaming everything that doesn't look the way you want it to look on Satan. Sometimes God allows stuff to be in front of us because it's a part of our process. Yea, though I walk, here it is in verse 4, through the darkest valley. Stop praying for light in the valley and pray for endurance in the valley. Stop praying for God to move all of the trauma and start praying for God to give you the countenance to be able to declare this will not stop me. Who needs to hear this today? Every now and then you got to display so much confidence in God that you say that's what you got. I can face that. Watch this. Here it is. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff. Your rod and your staff. I saw you. I saw you all around the world. You were shouting when I went to the rod. But you can't have the rod without the staff. Oh, now you don't want to talk to your boy. You were saying amen when I was telling you he uses this end to kill all the sheep. I mean to kill all the enemies. But Chris, there's another end to the rod. The staff has a crook at the other end. It's not 
for the bishop to walk in doing consecration services. It's a symbol of the fact. Can I declare something over you? It does not matter what you do. You are not going to be able to derail this season. Oh, I know I just messed you up. I don't care how hard you try it to disobey God in this season. He's only going to let you go so far before he takes that hook and slings it out there on you and pulls you back into his wheel. I don't know who needed to hear this. Last night, the reason why you and Pookie didn't enjoy last night ain't got nothing to do with performance. You couldn't enjoy it because the rod and the staff, he's pulling you back. That's why things that you used to do that brought you so much pleasure don't bring you pleasure anymore. Because what I've learned is that when I'm in God's will and I face stuff, even when I get so scared that I almost derail my destiny, Chris, he got this hook on me. He's like, no, I invested too much in you. I brought you too much. I brought you too far. I died for you. Do you think I'm going to let you just abort all that I paid for you to be? And he starts to pull me back. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the agitation you feeling in this season is not punishment for disobedience. He's pulling you back into obedience. God is not mad at you and judging you. God loves you so much that he wouldn't let you fail. God loves you so much he wouldn't let you mess up. God loved you. I'm talking to somebody that knows you should be in jail right now, but he pulled you back. I'm talking to somebody right now that knows you should have a disease, but he pulled you back. I'm talking to somebody right now that everybody should know your secrets, but he pulled you back. That's why you ought to be praising God. That's why I know I can face it. Because even when it looks like the enemy is going to win, he takes the rod and he destroys the enemy. But even when it looks like I'm about to mess it up myself, he takes the staff and pulls me back. That's why Psalm 37, 23 says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Watch this. He delights in every detail of their lives. So the reality is this. I got to get ready to get out of here. But it's time for you to face it. And the way you're going to face it is number one, by edifying the presence. The way you're going to face it is number two, by expecting the protection. The way you're going to face it is by number three, endure the process he got you in. But lest I keep you too long, watch this. Here's what I love, Chris. But I feel like lifting him up right here. I feel like giving God glory. I'm talking to you, Sister Shasha, over in Virginia Beach. I want you to understand that God loves you, that God has a future for you. He's got a destiny for you. According to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he knows the plans he has for you. And they are plans to bring you to a good completed end. They're not plans of failure. They're not plans of depression. They're not plans of discouragement. You hold on, girl, and you face whatever it is in front of you, knowing that God didn't bring you this far in order to leave you. Why should I do that, Bishop? Because the last thing I need you to understand is you got to embrace the publicity. He's trying to do it, not necessarily for you. He's trying to do it for all the folks that don't know him. I got it for you right there in Psalm 23, verse number 5. He says he prepares a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. It's not that you deserve a feast. It's not that you qualified for a feast. It's not that you're so anointed that you should have a feast. It's not that you never made a mistake. It's that God wants all the enemies to know that when God is on your side, can't nobody hold you back. God, y'all better come get your boy today. I know we got to get ready to go, but I've now learned that the reason why God is doing things in my life is not because I qualify. It's because I'm crazy enough to just say, God, use me. Make me your billboard. I want when they look up the word favor in the dictionary, I want Kim Brown's picture to come up. When they look up the word prosperous in the dictionary, I want Kim Brown's picture to come up. When they lift up the word anointed in the dictionary, I 
want Kim Brown pitcher to come up. Don't do it for me, but do it for you. Because the Bible says that he does it for his name's sake. So he's going to bless you for his name's sake. He's going to heal you for his name's sake. He's going to deliver you for his name's sake. He's going to take the taste of alcohol out of your mouth for his name's sake. He's going to heal your body for his name's sake. He's going to restore your peace for his name's sake. Embrace the publicity. I dare you to jump up right now and say, God, I'll be a billboard. Years ago, this scripture changed elders in our life, but the revelation came to her. That scripture where it says, give, and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give in your bosom. One night, that girl that I'm married to got on her knees and she said, God, make me the man. I said, what you talking about? She said, well, the scripture says, given it shall be given to you good measure, shaking together, pressed down, running over, shall men. She said, I told God, make me the man that's got to be the distributor. She said, because have you ever seen a pipe supply water and not get wet? She said, I don't need all the water. I just want to be the distributor of the water because that means I'm going to get wet too. She said, I don't need all the money. I just want him to know that he can trust me enough that he can say, give this person that. Give this person that and give this person that because it says, shall men give unto your bosom. I'm out of time. But we missed this revelation in Acts chapter 22 verse 15. It says, for you are to be witnesses, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. Can I suggest to you that the reason why you got to face it is because that's the only way you're going to be able to tell them what you've seen and what you've heard. I'm talking to you, Danny, oh my God, all the way in the United Kingdom. God is calling you to face it. You can't run from it. You can't be afraid of it. You're going to have to face it. Right now, around the world, I want to do this final piece of business with you, which is to give you the opportunity to begin to deal with your fear. So right now, if you desire to simply say, God, I just want to be saved. Saved doesn't mean perfection. Saved means beginning a relationship with God. And if you want to start that relationship right now, we can help you. All you got to do is text the word accept to 71441. Perhaps you were born again, but COVID, someone, somewhere, some situation, some stress caused you to take a moment away from God. And now you're not as close to God as you used to be. We can help you fix that today as well. All you got to do is text the word RESTART to 71441. And finally, whether you're in the United Kingdom, St. Louis, Oklahoma, Charlotte, or right here in Chesapeake, if you believe I am a voice in the kingdom crying out in the wilderness for you, I'm a sign to help grow you in the faith. And I'm your pastor. All you've got to do is text the word MOUNT UP to 71441. As soon as you text those words, you're going to be prompted on your device to make some decisions and give us a little bit of data so we can continue to serve you. Please follow through. Because in this season, don't be afraid of fear when fear calls. Answer the phone and just say, hello, fear. And the way you're going to start According to what the scripture and the spirit taught us today is you're going to start by talking to yourself and after you talk to yourself get yourself together shrug it off and face it 
now unto him who is able to keep us all from falling. To the only almighty God be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I'm looking you dead in your eye because I'm going to prophesy for you. Even in your depression, I declare you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, and you will be blessed when you go in Jesus' name.